Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Asheville Tech Media. I'm here today with Steve Shalita, who is the VP of Marketing for Pluribus Networks. Steve, thank you for having us here today. Hi, Scott. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Hey, happy to be here. Let's talk about software-defined networking. What is it? That's actually a pretty uh, loaded question. A lot of confusion around what SDN or software defined networking actually is. And, and I think it's useful to break it down into a couple of pieces. First piece being what's the, what is software hardware disaggregation, which is something that's well known in the compute side of things, separating the hardware from the software. If you think of the traditional vendors like Cisco, Arista, Brocade, a lot of these vendors sell you hardware and software together. The first wave of this technology, really, this move, was to disaggregate hardware and software together. Mm -hmm. A number of companies came out and actually provided network operating software that ran on white box hardware. And the notion of that was buy your hardware from one vendor, buy your software from another, and get what you want from a network perspective. Then software-defined networking came about, and the idea there was to separate the control plane and the data plane. It's important to differentiate. This whole notion of separating hardware and software is an SDN. That's disaggregation. SDN is about changing the control plane dynamics right. to create a control environment that runs these switches. Essentially, make the switches dumb, put all the intelligence in a controller, like a supervisor in a chassis, and run the switches from the controller. The problem with that architecture is scale. Scale and performance become an issue. So SDN is really about how do you build and scale the network, how do you drive automation, how do you drive intelligence and broader capabilities in the network infrastructure by separating the functions more. And when we're talking about Pluribus Networks, we're talking about beyond the first and second wave. You're talking about the third wave of SDN at this point. Absolutely. Pluribus represents the third wave of software-defined networking by really moving beyond the notion of a controller. See, the controller, while it makes sense what you want to do with that controller to get the, the scale and the functionality benefits, that controller inhibits uh, deployments. It's complex. It adds significant amount of complexity to how you deploy this environment, but it adds latency and it adds a, a, quite a number of issues in building out that environment. One big one is you can't scale across multiple locations right. because the controller functions just like a supervisor in a switch, and so you're putting a single chassis and you're just breaking it up into pieces. So by eliminating the controller, we've removed the obstacles to SDN adoption. We've enabled people to put SDN in environments that are already existing as opposed to having to replace all of the network layers. So now you can get the benefits of SDN, the automation, the intelligence, the control benefits, mm -hmm. but you can scale that across multiple data centers, multiple locations, and it interoperates in what they call a brownfield environment, in with the existing network. So you don't have to replace everything all at once. All of the traditional SDN vendors, which are using controllers, aren't suitable for brownfield types of deployment. It's a greenfield environment. Right. Who has greenfield networks anymore? No one. Right? Now, you mentioned some names before, like Arista. They're well known for being an SDN company. And you mentioned a little bit about how they're not suitable necessarily for brownfield deployments because of the way that they're architected. Can you expand that a little bit? Well, Arista is actually not an SDN company. Arista is fundamentally like Cisco. They sell a hardware box with their software. And they really pioneered the whole notion of leveraging merchant silicon and making that credible. And what Arista would really, I think Arista's claim to fame is they offered a viable, credible alternative to Cisco. And while customers were looking for an alternative vendor to what Cisco provided, Arista came on the scene, mostly Cisco people in the first place, so there was a lot of credibility with that, and offered a really solid operating system coupled with really solid hardware built on merchant silicon. And they got traction. And what that shows, and they paved the way to really change the dynamics of Cisco in the market. They paved the way by getting people to move from Cisco to their their devices, right? Arista talks about being a software vendor, but really right. they're a hardware vendor. Look at their website, hundreds of different boxes, right? right? And so that is the, the core of what they sell, and customers have moved into that environment because they're looking for an alternative to Cisco. Now, SDN represented the opportunity to move to a much more open environment, leverage disaggregation, reduce costs, get the benefits of hardware and software flexibility so you can create your own consumption model and, and, and meet different requirements, but the, the controller was the obstacle to keep that from happening. Right. So as SDN continues to evolve, remove the controller, make things simple. Simple is really key to getting the, the accelerated adoption of SDN. Now you start to see some more traction. 
In, in recent months, uh, Arista's talked about being SDN, but they're not. They are fundamentally hardware and software together. Not only are they not disaggregated, they're not SDN. Their cloud vision story is really management, and they're framing and creating an SDN story around a management platform that manages the devices to create a quasi-automated environment. Automation really comes from inside the operating system, inside the network. It isn't driven by an outside platform. If that's the case, I could automate legacy networks right. with provisioning systems. There's lots of products on the market that can do that. So I wouldn't really classify Arista in that SDN class. Of course, they, they want to put themselves there, but in the bigger picture, it's really about management for them and, and the next kind of the next wave of, of hardware options. And really what Pluribus represents is the next wave of software-defined networking that focuses on the data center, but also extends into the broader enterprise. Okay. So we can bring software to price enterprise, uh, the software-defined enterprise to, to realization and start extending SDN into the campus environment. Now, the other thing that's happening is you're doing some work with Ericsson at this point. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening with Ericsson and Pluribus Networks? Absolutely. And, and I think we've talked about this before, but in case folks don't know, Pluribus originally was founded with this notion of creating this integration of server, compute, storage into a single platform. Mm -hmm. And what we built was our NetVisor operating system that enabled that. Uh, both Ericsson and Tibco, big, large companies in the enterprise and the service provider markets, actually OEM'd our product to build their platforms. And so the Pluribus NetVisor operating system in our adaptive cloud fabric actually powers both of those vendors' solutions. Ericsson has a platform called the HDS 8000, which there's been a little bit of news on, um, that's deployed in very large enterprise, but also uh, heavily deployed in the carrier market. And our operating system powers that environment. It was, it was just in the news um, just recently that uh, the Swisscom deployment in, uh, in Switzerland went live, and that's completely powered by uh, the Pluribus operating environment, our adaptive cloud fabric, runs the virtual Evolve Packet Core, passes all of the traffic, Volte traffic, messaging, data traffic, and provides all the interconnection in the mobile switching center. And, and so the relevance of that to the enterprise is it's a proof point for scale, for performance, and really is a significant proof point as to the traction of software-defined technology really starting to make its way into really large-scale production environments. Very good, Steve, thank you for having us here to shoot this video. Thanks very much. And thank you to our audience for watching this video.